Yo guys, what's up? It's Ken back at you again. Today I don't bring you really a guitar orientated video, but instead the answers to all the questions you guys threw at me in my recent Q&A video. Uh, your responses were absolutely fantastic. I really can't wait to get answering them all. Um, if I can't cram all the questions in uh, to this video, I will be making another video afterwards. But um, without further ado, I will get straight into it. <laughs> Right, okay then. First question. Uh, I have one here from James Wilding. I've had some great questions from this guy in the past. He says, Aha! Q&A. So I've asked you many questions through YouTube already, but some things I have never asked. Are you fully self-taught? I find teachers rather useless sometimes as all they do is repeat the same part or song for weeks. Have people's YouTube videos taught you to play guitar? And when did you start playing? Hope you can reply soon. Many thanks. All right, uh, cheers so much, James. That's a really, really great question. And uh, I'm going to answer the last part of your question first because loads of people have asked me about this. And it's when did you start playing? Well, I started from a very, very young age, as uh, a picture on the screen will show you now. Nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, the first uh, time I actually picked up a guitar properly was when I was about uh, four or five years old. My dad bought me. A, um, a Squire uh, Stratocaster, a, a, mini, a mini Squire Strat, and it was great. Uh, I really learned sort of my first chords on that, um, and that really, really got me going. But then eventually, I think as I sort of progressed through primary school, I ended up um, quitting once. Uh, I, I, don't, I can't remember why, I think I just hit a plateau and sort of gave up, really. Uh, until one day, when I was thinking probably about nine, uh, Dad brought home... A, uh, a little present and that was a, a Mexican flip-flop Stratocaster uh, and if you've never ever seen one of those it had the most amazing paint job you've ever seen uh, basically it would change color from green to blue in the light they're quite rare now so if you can find one buy it um, and it was really really great really got me going again and as I started to progress even further it was just a great guitar to have at the time uh, and also as well, Dad ended up buying for himself really because he plays too. He bought a um, an Ash Deluxe uh, Fender Stratocaster in I think age Cherry Sunburst, and that was an amazing guitar. Um, the neck on it was absolutely amazing. We full if we actually sold it not too long ago. When I say not too long ago, it was in the last couple of years, and it was a, that was another really really great guitar. The neck on it was beautiful, and also the finish on it was great too. It had um, some really, really cool uh, features like abalone inlays and uh, S1 switching and all that kind of stuff. It sounded absolutely great. Um, okay, uh, I'll get to another question that you've asked me, James. Are you fully self-taught? Another a lot. That's another popular one that people have asked me. Yes, pretty much. Um, I've been using... Well, I'm going to answer both of your questions in one here, really. Um, I am mostly am self-taught, yes. When I started... Uh, my dad was a really, really big influence on me because he was the guy who really got me into guitar in the first place. And uh, he taught me my first sort of chords, riffs. Like one of my first riffs was Hell Ain't a Bad Place to Be by ACDC. Man on the Silver Mountain. The, it was wrong at the time, but Man on the Silver Mountain by uh, Rainbow. And also... Little things like um, Shot Down in Flames by ACDC. Well, ACDC basically started me off. It was great, really good for that sort of just dead straight uh, rhythm playing. It was really, really cool. And also had people's YouTube videos uh, taught you how to play guitar. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> with uh, I've come across many really great YouTubes at the time. I really follow most, well, mainly two. And that is Robert Baker and uh, Rick Graham. Uh, along with a load of other YouTube ones, uh, YouTube channels rather, uh, and they're just really, really great. I, I'm over the past like two or three years, I've really been um, sort of focusing on my technique and learning things that are quite new and sort of sculpting my own style and really um, learning how to get better at what I do and hoping to find my own style if that makes sense. Uh, quite often as well, I'll watch a lot of live gigs. Uh, say ones I've been to, but more commonly ones that other people have been to. So, for instance, that could be a Steel Panther gig, a really old Ozzy Osbourne gig, Gus, uh, Gus G on his own, Firewind, Steve Vai, all those guys. And uh, I'll just be looking around for new licks to learn, 
perhaps maybe uh, looking at what guitars they're using, some of the things that they might do. Just all that kind of stuff, really, what any other YouTuber really does. Um, anyway, that, those were some really, really good questions, James, I thank you very much. <laughs> Have Indy four nine three. He says hello or she. Uh, have you uh, played that one? Black Star HT one R. What did you think of them? Uh, what strings and picks do you use? And how many hours of exercise every day do you have a training plan for the week? Thanks. Um, well, I'll start with uh, about the Black Star. I've never played a Black Star HT one R, as and I really really want to. Uh, when I was um, a couple of years ago, when I was looking around rather for a um, a smaller sort of like practice amp, uh, I ended up uh, having well narrowing down to two choices. One was obviously the Yamaha THR10X, which I have here, and also the uh, the HT1R. And with things with the Blackstar HT1, I'd just seen Gus G's video he'd released with it, and I was like, oh my god, I want that! It's literally just an amazing, amazing tone. And um, and it really, really is great. I really would love to try one, genuinely. Because, obviously, it's Blackstar. Why the hell would you not want to try it? Um, but um, eventually, I ended up going for the Yamaha, simply because I couldn't find a Blackstar HD1 to try. And also, as well, I think it was a bit more expensive at the time. Um, what strings and picks do you use? All right, with regard to strings, I used a Dario 9-42. I was a heavy user of Ernie Ball for a long time, but obviously, obviously as it's gone on, uh, I ended up using the Dario's. One, they're cheaper, they're pretty much just as good. And uh, also you can buy a three pack. So, um, which is really, really great for me, especially when, because um, quite often I'll play all of the guitars until the strings are dead, and eventually I'll, be, I'll break one string, and then all of a sudden all two others will break on the other's guitars. So it's really, really handy to have a three pack. Um, what picks do I use? Uh, I use a Dunlop, the sacred Dunlop, uh, if I can get it off the guitar here, Dunlop uh, Jazz 3 XL. It's the uh, the red one here. It's the only one I have. I actually never really buy picks. I just will say I could be in the shop or even on the street and I'll just find them on the floor and I'll just pick them up. <laughs> but the uh, Jazz 3 I really, really like because it's pointed. You can see that. I've really, really worn it down. I only have one Jazz 3. And uh, I really, really love... Uh, the way they feel and the way they sort of fit into your hand and also they cut through the strings real nice I don't know what it is but if by chance I don't have a Jazz 3 lying around I will use a uh, Dunlop Tortex I uh, can't see one around at the moment but I'll have, it. I'll have a um, I use the blue ones or the uh, the purple ones uh, the Dunlop Tortex they just sit really really nicely in your hand and they feel absolutely fantastic really really like those uh, and how many hours do you exercise every day? Do you have a training plan for the week? Well, if, if, well, when, if it comes to physical exercise, no, I have no training plan at all. The only exercise I, I get or any calories I burn are when I'm doing legato runs, really. Um, how many, what exercise do I do? I'm not really a big fan of exercises really on guitar. I know I've taught exercises before, but the thing is with exercises, quite often you can get stuck in one place doing them and you were and you eventually you become sort of trapped of being able to do one thing in one place on the fretboard if that makes sense but if it is if it's to warm you up they're absolutely fantastic but if it's actually get you better at the guitar i wouldn't recommend exercises i'd recommend uh taking one something dead dead simple like a, even if it's just a short pentatonic lick and then just rehearse it all over the neck Perhaps maybe play it backwards, just as dead simple as that, try and play something backwards. Um, and otherwise that's it. And do I have a training plan for the week? No, not really, to be honest. Um, I don't really do any of that kind of stuff. I'm, I don't really like sort of a regimented practice routine. A lot of people have asked me about a practice routine as well, and I don't really, really have one as such. Actually, I'll just show you the sort of thing I get up to when it comes to practicing. Lucky for me, I have a guitar on hand. This is my circles guitar. I just have quite often what I'll do is I'll um, play a bunch of chords, say it could be some rhythm, I'll just play whatever first riff I can think of. But anyway, just 
one riff that will come into your head, and then eventually, once you've sort of got yourself all synced up, you can start with all of the, uh, the solo-y kind of stuff. That's all. <laughs> Obviously, I could play like that all day, but eventually, you just uh, play all the stuff that you sort of used to, really, and just practice what you already know. And then I get on YouTube and then get inspired, and off I go again. It's just a big cycle of how I learn. Um, those are some really, really great questions, and thanks very much for that. I have another question here, or we'll have another bunch of questions from Silent079. Uh, he says, Hello, Cameron. I think we would all like to hear a bit about your background, the typical who are you and where are you from and what are your plans and that sort of thing. Also, how long have you been playing? I've answered that already. Uh, any advice for guitarists just starting out? That's a really good question. And what are some of your influences? Keep up the good work. Thanks, Mark. Cheers very much, Mark. Um, well, I'm going to start with sort of my background, really. Well, I'm 18 years old. I'm from the Manchester area. I live very close to Sounds Great Music, which is great for me. Um, I, what are my plans? Well, I plan to go on to do um, a degree in music business at the British and Irish Institute of Modern Music in Manchester. And I can't wait to start there. I start in October, which should be very, very fun. Um, otherwise, I don't really have much plans to get better at guitar, I guess. That's another plan that I have, and it's um, been continuous for the past three years. Uh, how long have you been playing? I already said that. Any advice for guitarists that are just starting out? Wow. Um, just starting out. Um, if you just well, if you're just starting out, you just bought a guitar from day one. Don't give up. Uh, that's a, well the number one rule really. Also as well, be dead patient. Be quite regimented in what you're learning, and also try not to chuck yourself in at the deep end. Like. One thing I sort of learned was quite often I was trying to learn stuff that was too hard for me already. You've got to sort of uh, work out a bunch of stepping stones. So take for instance, you want to learn, um, for argument's sake, You Shook Me All Night Long by ACDC. There are a few great pentatonic licks in that, some string bending exercises. Well, exercises, just parts in that that involve a lot of really good string bending. And instead of trying to learn that solo straight off, you've got to learn how to string bend first. You've got to learn the pentatonic scale first. You've got to do all of these things before you are capable of achieving what you want to achieve, if this makes sense. And uh, also as well, be confident as well. If you end up hitting a plateau and you don't feel like you're going anywhere, just keep playing. Just literally keep playing and eventually you'll be um, doing something you already know one day. You might make a mistake and it will sound awesome. So just think about uh, that way. That's the way um, people like, um, I know if Satchel said this in an interview, Satchel from Steel Panther, he says um, sometimes things like, uh, I was learning Van Halen 1 and uh, I screwed up the whole album and that's how I developed my style. Uh, he said something along those lines somewhere, I know that for definite. Uh, that's a really, really great question. Thanks for that, Mark. Uh, also, you ask, what are some of your influences? Oh, great. Um, my, well, I'll take you from when I just started out. Uh, when I first started, my biggest influence was my dad, by a million miles. Uh, when I first got a guitar, well, when, well, my first sort of vision of um, like the Excalibur moment, if you like, of when I first saw a guitar player was when um, my dad was playing uh, in the living room one time. We had, I can't remember what amp we had, but we had uh, quite a massive sort of an old boss sort of effects, multiple effects pedal thing. And uh, the guitar was a Music Man Axis in uh, Trans Amber, and literally, or Trans Lucent Gold or something. And the, literally, the quilt top on that was spectacular. Literally, if you looked at it, bang on, it was like an arrow. It was literally 3D, and uh, you could get lost in it. It was absolutely amazing. And fully enough, it was one of the first to come into Europe. I know that for sure, because it was somewhere around the house. We've got the uh, copy of the magazine in which it was reviewed. And it was an utterly, utterly amazing guitar. And just seeing my dad playing it, uh, he was playing, I think, Panama or something off, uh, something of the Van Hagar years. And that guitar sound, it was just, oh, 
heaven for me and, I, and that's what made me think I really want to do this genuinely and uh, play guitars like that, that style. It was just that main moment. And as I've got better, say when I was getting into um, some music, well my musical tastes if you like, uh, Angus Young was a huge influence for starting me off. Richie Blackmore was another one. So, well, Richie Blackmore was more looking at him and going, how do you do that? <laughs> and then I do what every other guitar player has ever done who plays rock music, and that is come across Eddie Van Halen and go, oh shit, that's uh, that literally, I heard Eruption for the first time. I thought it was a keyboard. Um, but she was like, oh my, that's amazing. It proves how something as good as that can have its own impact, even now, when I was probably about nine years old. Um, well, nowadays, when it comes to um, picking my true style and finding my own style, if that makes sense, I'll take samples from other guitar players and nick things. And these guys could be a bit... My biggest influence today, well, there's two, really, that are sort of on a par with each other, and that is Gus G and uh, Satchel from Steel Panther, by without a shadow of a doubt. And probably on the side, we have Zach Wilde, Steve Vai, Andy James, Rick Graham, and perhaps maybe a few others, uh, a few other sort of minor ones knocking around. But literally, they are the guitar players that I really genuinely look up to in terms of technical brilliance and amazing style and all of that. I'm sure there are more, I just can't really think of them off the top of my head right now. But cheers so much, Mark. There's some really, really great questions.